what's going on guys pixelated back at it again with another video it seems you guys liked the previous video i did comparing the eqt 9317 support to the ultra boost so i did what any reasonable being would do for their viewers i brought the segment back we know the eqt 9317 is a brand new boost sneaker and silhouette introduced to us this year in january by adidas and the comfort of this shoe gave the ultra boost a run for its money if you haven't seen the comparison yet, I'll link it somewhere on the page right now, if YouTube allows it. If not, well, I just look like a big buffoon right about now. This time though, we are comparing it to another extremely comfortable sneaker out of Adidas' lineup. It's the Yeezy Boost 350 V2. This one particularly is in the black and red colorway, or bread as they're known around the streets. Without further ado, let's get into it we will first start off with the topic of comfort now when it comes to comfort we already know the eqt has more boost not only can you feel the boost but you can see it too it's a super thick midsole with a cushy feel and the boost extends out to encapsulate some of the upper so even if your foot hits the ground at an angle you still get the cushioning of the boost to absorb the shock with the Yeezy 350 V2, while you don't have a visible boost encapsulating the upper and providing the same sort of cushy feedback that you get with the EQT 9317, the Yeezy still has an extremely large base. The midsole extends out from all sides and the back further than the shape of the upper. So if you do hit the ground running at a side angle or angled heel, you don't get the same cushy response. You still get cushioning from the boost being pressed against in the large aggressively shaped midsole. It's a much more controlled response versus a cushy response such as with the EQT 9317. This is most likely due to the fact that the boost is surrounded by a rubber midsole that's rounded and wide, allowing for a lot of surface coverage and the outsole grooves provide more grip to the ground. This is useful in situations where you say, you know, you're running and you make a sharp cut for whatever reason, I wouldn't truly recommend running in Yeezys ever, like professionally or athletically, but you know, for whatever reason, say for example, you were getting a parking ticket and had to rush to your car and drive off before the parking ticket enforcer places it on your car, not speaking from uh, experience or anything, the grooves would be very useful in situations such as that. While the EQT has a more cushy boost response system, I'm going to have to give this one to the Yeezy 350 V2 just because the controlled boost response feels so much better and secure and makes you feel like you're actually secure when hitting the ground at odd angles. The drawback of the EQT 9317 is that although there's more boost and it's more cushy, there's no rubber midsole encapsulating it to control the response and instead it just feels a little less, feels more distributed, you never know where the cushioning is going to hit. It's sort of the difference between landing on a flat surface with cushioning versus straight up landing on a sofa. So when you land on a flat surface that has cushioning underneath, you know you're going to keep your balance, you know you're going to land flat, you know the cushioning is going to prevent the hard shock. But when you're landing on a sofa, it's kind of like you know you're going to get the cushioning, but you don't really know how you're going to land, you might not be balanced you might be balanced it's really up in the air so Yeezy takes the W in the area of comfort for that very reason on to the second category it is the fit the fit is where we look at the upper and how your foot feels in the shoe the EQT upper as I've mentioned in the previous video is made up of many materials TPU mesh suede and it has the prime knit that they refer to as the pixel knit they all seem to support your foot in one way or another the fit of the eqt upper is mint i love the way the prime knit feels it's smooth and forms to my foot just perfectly i went true to size and i can't see these ever being painfully tight even though they are snug with thick socks these are essentially toe pinch free sneakers which is not very common from my experience the ortholite liner on the inside right here feels very soft and doesn't graze your feet in any way. My one complaint, once again, is the single split tongue wrap. It doesn't hold my heel in place how I'd like to, even with a nice taut lace going on, and the tongue sometimes ends up in the wrong place. Like for example, when I put it on, sometimes it's like sticking up here and it's the bottom kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the bottom kind of pinches into my foot. So I have to sort of, you know, wiggle around and shove it back into place. Once your foot is in there, it's a little harder. Obviously it's easier right now. When I first tried on the Yeezy 350 V2, the first thing I noticed was just how well they fit. I have wide feet and I mentioned in an earlier video, my friend was telling me how he thought Kanye made sneakers for wide footed people and I'm inclined to agree. There is no Adidas shoe that fits my foot more perfectly than the Yeezy 350 V2, not even the Ultra Boost. Oh, I've had my Ultra Boost woes. 
Of course, it doesn't have that Ultra Boost style sock liner, so you don't get the same hug on the ankle as an Ultra Boost or the EQT for that matter, but what it does have works great. The upper fits my foot perfectly and the ankle area is just tight enough. The one thing I noticed between these two shoes is that the upper of the EQT has more actual support when it comes to making a sharp turn and such. I know this sounds a little uh, contradictory, but for example, but for example, when I landed on my Yeezys, say like in a in a sharp cut, what I noticed was my foot would move a lot more see like this like you my foot would move a lot more off the footbed and it just kind of you feel that pressure on your toes against the prime knit and it's just very uncomfortable and you could possibly hurt yourself if you do it way too many times with the eqt it's not the same experience at all even though it's a snug fit the prime knit feels softer and although your foot probably does move a little when you make that sharp cut it does not hurt your toes or feet in any way as it does in the yeezys all in all the upper end fit of both these shoes is very neck and neck for me but I'll have to give it to the EQT. While the single split tongue wrap prevents my heel from firmly sitting on the footbed, this slight flaw is overshadowed by the form-fitting upper, the extra support provided by the suede panel on the medial side, the ortholite insole and the ortholite liner on the back combined for a soft, comfortable and leisurely experience. This is just something different. Now onto the last category of this comparison, it is the style category. Once again, of course style is very subjective based on what you prefer. The EQT is one of those sneakers that actually gives Yeezys a run for their money for being outlandish in their design. The Yeezy 350 V2 is a style that many still feel is a little out there and they wouldn't wear them because they couldn't pull it off which in my opinion I feel like anybody can pull off anything if they really wanted to but that's another topic entirely. Although the EQT is a little more out there and I'm usually a sucker for the most outlandish design, I would actually go with the Yeezy. I just love the aggressively shaped midsole on this. The prime knit is tougher here as well. It just feels like a shoe that although it's soft and folds at a light push, it won't break apart in semi-harsh conditions. Combine that with the boost cushioning being encapsulated in a smoky midsole to allow the entire sneaker to be one cohesive colorway versus the EQT and pretty much any other boost shoe where the boost is always going to be this white and it's going to pop and stick out from the upper. In some cases that is a preferable aesthetic and with people who love boost shoes that is obviously an aesthetic that they have come to accept and love. But at the same time it's good to know that you can have a boost shoe where you feel the boost and the comfort and still be able to cover it in different colors without it looking like it's being painted on. The Yeezy just fits and looks really great to me at the same time. It's a really versatile sneaker. And for that reason, it wins the style category. Overall, they're both really great sneakers. You really can't go wrong with either. I don't have many complaints with either of this shoe. This is a battle between two top tier shoes in my opinion, and it's just about which one is better. I chose the Yeezy just based on the fact that I prefer the Yeezy's comforts and looks a tad better than the EQT Support 9317. However, they both have their own place in my collection. Get which one you think is better for you. At the end of the day, it's not what I like that counts, it's what you like that counts. With that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. If you took something away from it, please hit that like button. Every single like counts, I promise you. What did you think of the comparison? Are you a fan of either shoe? or none at all, please let me know in the comments section below. Please share the video with your friends, let them know that Pix always does the dopest comparisons, and please subscribe for more juicy content. With that being said, catch you later. Pixelated, out.